Hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxbot here, and welcome to another episode of STEM Bites, where we answer your seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and mathematics. Do you like that? Snap for every subject. All right, so I'm really excited because today we get to meet a new friend called Science Squirrel. Woo! Yeah! Science Squirrel, so excited and jittery. Okay, Science Squirrel, what is your question? Ah, I forgot. Seriously? No, wait. Okay, 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 okay. Just so excited to be here. Ah. What is an atom? Atom? Like A-D-A-M? The person? No, 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 no. A-T-O-M. One of my friends was talking about it and I don't know what it is. That is a really great question, Science Squirrel. So an atom is actually made up of... Ah! Wait. We have physics penguin here. Yes, um... I would like to uh, just highlight that this is my field. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Actually, okay, come on. You're both right. We're going to call a tie here because, yes, physics is the realm of the, the itty bitty, teeny tiny, can't zoom in any farther. What are the building blocks of this universe? What are the building blocks of life? And atoms are totally the building blocks of life. So cool. But also, Biology and chemistry really depend on atoms. And so you can argue that, yes, it is the realm of physics, but also all of science cares about atoms. Very important stuff. So what are they actually, besides just generally saying the building blocks of life, which is very awe-inspiring and magical, but like, what does it mean? Okay, so atoms are made of three main things, three main ingredients. You throw them in the pot, you cook them up, and you get life. Woo! Easy peasy, right? Okay, so atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And they form two kind of distinct parts of the atom. So the first part is the nucleus. And the nucleus is where the protons and neutrons live. Protons! Yeah! Neutrons! Yeah! Okay, and then around the outside of the nucleus orbiting the nucleus is the electron cloud. So this is very hard to draw. Most people or most things when I see atoms drawn looks like the Bohr model of the atom, which is where you have the nucleus and then you have these like kind of elliptical orbit things. That is wrong. This is not actually, oh, I need my red, my red chuck. Okay, this is wrong. It's not, it doesn't look like this. We know that now. We know that it's not, I should just do it. <laughs> it's when I got really red pen, it's not this. But also it's kind of like, this is really hard to illustrate, okay? So, you know, if you want to draw that with the caveat that like, yes, we know that this is inaccurate because electrons exist in the cloud, not a specific linear um, orbital like, you know, like a satellite would around the earth. It's a cloud, like the, like an atmospheric cloud. The cloud exists at a, a full, um, across the full atmosphere of our nucleus or something like that. My analogy is breaking down, but yes, Bohr model, not accurate. The electrons are in a cloud. Um, and so the electron is at a specific distance from the nucleus. So we're going to pull out orange here. And it can exist anywhere within that cloud. It's a 3D cloud. So right now I'm trying to draw a 2D representation of a three-dimensional object, which is our atom. So just imagine, if you picture like if you have a blueberry in your hand, there is like an aura around the blueberry of tastiness. And that aura exists all the way around that blueberry. And you're like, yeah. So that aura is like the electron cloud. Yeah, something like that. Um, so why is it a cloud? Well, because electrons are funky and weird. Uh, I did another video on them because they're like my favorite particle. And it is a cloud because they exist as both a wave and a particle. So you can't point to any part of the cloud and be like, that's the electron. The whole cloud is the electron. It exists in a wave of probability. Spooky. Ooh. But fun and really cool and awe-inspiring. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Why do we have the nucleus? Nope. That's orange. We have the nucleus because um, we have protons and neutrons, and the strong nuclear force 
is the strongest force, hence its name, but it only acts on very, 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 very small distances. So like 10 to the minus 15 meters. And that is what holds protons and neutrons together. The strong nuclear force makes these two particles really, really strong buddies for life. So um, <laughs> if you want to pull these apart, you need a ton of energy. And that's what particle accelerators do. They smash particles together at really, really, really high energies to try to separate particles um, like uh, protons and neutrons from the nucleus. Okay, 10 to the 15th negative 15th meters is really small. Like how, what does that actually mean? Okay, so pretend we want to uh, increase the size of an atom so we can see it and we build a magical ray gun and we're like, we point it at the particle, uh, the atom, and we're like, yeah, let's, let's make you the size of a blueberry because we're on blueberry train right now. Um, I like blueberries and it's summertime. So if you were to increase the size of an atom to be uh, the size of a blueberry, then a regular blueberry would be the size of the Earth. We're keeping everything consistent. In other words, an atom is to us as a blueberry is to Earth. Very, 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 very small. And likewise, um, well, okay, I should also say the nucleus is where um, most of the mass of the atom lives, most of its, its heft. And so the electron cloud is where most of the volume exists. So what does that mean? Well, the nucleus is really, really, really small, even compared to the electron cloud. So if we were to take our blueberry analogy again, and we were to plop the nucleus onto a football field, which sport, American, or everybody else, take your pick. These fields are around the same size. Okay, you put the, you put the blueberry on a little field. The blueberry would be the nucleus, and the whole field would be the electron cloud. So you'd be playing and you would not see the blueberry and you'd go squish, except it'd be more like a owl because this is very, very, very massive. Okay, so electron cloud, volume, nucleus, mass, very small. Okay, so we know that the nucleus is held together with a strong nuclear force, which works on very, 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 very small distances, but not so much on larger distances. But why does the electron care, right? Like these, these, two guys, these two particles are buddies and they're like, yes, best friends for life. But why does the electron join the party? What's going on there? Well, protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutrally charged. So the nucleus has an overall positive charge and electrons, hey, electrons are negatively charged. And so because of the um, electromagnetic force, they are attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus. Super cool. The more um, positive charge that our nucleus has, the more electrons are gonna wanna come and hang out because a lot of things in the universe try to be, uh, they try to equalize, they try to be neutral and even out. And so, um, the more protons and neutrons you have in the nucleus, because they tend to be equal, the more electrons will be attracted to the nucleus and will form uh, in the electron cloud. Super cool, right? Okay, one more thing to add, uh, because this is one of the most wild things about atoms. The electrons can only exist at specific distances from the nucleus. Two electrons can exist at one distance at a time. These are called orbitals. And so if you have more electrons, they can't just stack up anywhere in between. They have to go at a certain distance. So if this is orbital one, then and maybe this would be orbital two. Um, but your electrons, uh, again, it's kind of hard to draw, but like if you think about um, uh, the, the planet orbitals around the sun, the Earth's orbit around the sun is really consistent. The distance doesn't change. I mean, it's an elliptical orbit, but like that distance of the elliptical orbit is very consistent, which is very good for us because it'd be very hard for life to exist on a planet if its orbit around its star was changing. See three body problem sci-fi show, for example. Um, 
does not sound fun. It sounds very difficult for life to exist on that planet. Um, the alien planet, not this one. So these orbitals are consistent across all atoms, which blows my mind. Also, why are there distances? I don't know. It is what it is, which is a very unsatisfying answer, but also like kind of cool. So, um, so there are, there are lots of different orbitals. My chemistry friends will be like, yes, yes, I know all this. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, you probably, you know it way better than I do. Um, but these distances, um, they increase, uh, in, in, they increase in, in distance from the nucleus. Um, but each orbital can hold, uh, two electrons. Um, so we'll just do that for, for funsies, but atoms can make friends with other atoms because of these orbitals. So let's say that we have, um, uh, an, an atom over here with only one electron in its orbital. Uh, I think this is helium, uh, not helium. It's not helium. I'm really bad at this game. Don't quote me on that. Someone reply in the comments with what atom I'm drawing. Uh, I did physics, not chemistry. Okay. At one point I knew what element this was on the periodic table. Um, but I'm sure someone will be happy to be like, Oh, I know. Yeah. So please tell me. Um, cause I don't feel like looking it up right now. Okay. Anyway, so another atom comes along. And um, I'm not going to draw this to scale, but it, on the outside, it has another, another electron. Um, but it's, its orbital on the outside only has one electron. And so both of these electrons are like, so sad. I don't have a best friend like the inner orbitals do. Well, these two can just be like, hey, let's hang out together and share and be friends, even though we are, belong to two different nuclei. And that is how you get atoms making molecules. And I'm, there are different ways uh, that this can happen. Um, but effectively, how we get molecules from atoms is through this exchange of electrons. Um, so cool. OK, so I hope that you had as much fun as I did. Um, I really love this stuff. I think it's wild and wonderful. And I just love that. Um, these simple, seemingly simple structures, right, are the underpinnings for just everything, for stars, for planets, for space. Um, there's stuff in space um, for us, for rocks, all of the things. It boggles my mind and just makes me so grateful that we exist. So I hope it does the same for you. Please let me know if you have any questions about atoms, A-T-O-M-S, the science and physics topic, or if you have any other questions about science, tech, engineering, and math, we can tackle them together. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey, and I will see you next time.